Hi there, Corona Render users and 3D Studio Max lovers. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to add 3D models as cars on an image like this. Also, I'm going to show you how to create motion blur for the wheels of the car and also how to add the shadow beneath the car and also how to post the overall image. So if you are ready, let's dive in. So in this episode we are going to use one HDRI from hdrmaps.com You can go just go to Frisbees and we're gonna use a very beautiful HDRI which is this one It also has the back plates as you can see uh, We're going to use one of them to add the car on the image The one that I used in the render is this one so you just need to add this to your cart, you create an, uh, an account and then you can download the image. For the uh, car, uh, I used one of the cars from the uh, Corona Cosmos, uh, it's this Volvo, it doesn't have a logo. So yeah, please download this Volvo and uh, let's dive into it. So first of all, let me just close all of this, create another scene, an empty one. So after you download the car, you can just drag and import the car directly from 3D Studio Mac. If I go on top, the car was uh, it's exactly on 000. And um, let's uh, see the car. I'm just gonna make it full mesh so I can see it. And then I'm gonna say duplicate mesh. In this way, the program is gonna create, it's gonna import the mesh, and it's also gonna keep the the proxy that was imported. I'm just gonna keep it as a mesh. As you can see, this is the car. It looks very nice. It's very low poly actually. It has only five million. Yeah, it's not really low poly. Anyway, the first thing that we're going to do before uh, doing anything, uh, we're just gonna animate the wheels. So they're gonna look like they are rotated in the, in the render. So to do that, we need to, first of all, I'm gonna convert to this to editable poly because uh, it's much uh, faster. In. Okay, and now I'm gonna try to select the, each wheel and detach it from the... Okay, this is the first one. I'm checking to see if uh, I made it correct. I'm gonna detach and call it wheel W1. And then I'm just gonna go for the second one. Okay, selection looks good. I'm gonna detach wheel 2. I'm gonna try to make a selection, almost good. I'm gonna make another one to be sure that I made I selected everything. With the Alt on I'm gonna deselect other stuff. So with Ctrl you can select multiple things and with Alt you can unselect stuff on your scene. Okay, we have also the other wheel. I'm gonna say wheel 3. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the last one. I'm just gonna go a little bit more on the top. Be sure that I'm selecting everything. Okay, detach wheel 4. Okay, now I'm gonna select the first one. As you can see, the pivot of the wheel is somewhere here, so I need to add the pivot exactly in the middle of the wheel. So I'm just gonna go to, go to hierarchy, effect pivot, and I'm gonna choose center to object. I'm gonna do this to all the wheels, effect pivot, center. I'm gonna go to the next one, effect pivot, center. And to the last one, effect pivot, center. And now the pivot of each wheel is exactly in the center of the wheel, I hope. Uh, let's check. Oh uh, yeah, looks like it. And now I'm just gonna make the animation for each wheel to create the motion blur that you saw at the end. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna create an animation for each uh, wheel. Actually, it's going to be the same animation. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna rotate this. I'm gonna click Auto key, go to frame number 10 and rotate this like this so as you can see here on the x axis is rotating so i'm gonna choose here 160 and now if i move it i can see that the wheel is spinning this is perfect i'm gonna do the same with the other ones 160 160 160 so now if I choose the animation as you can see the wheels are spinning which is perfect okay I'm gonna stop the animation now and now we're gonna add the HDRI into the scene so I'm gonna go to materials and here I'm gonna add a corona bitmap map 
and I'm gonna load my HDRI using downloads and I'm loading the HDRI. Okay, now I zoom in. I have the HDRI. The second thing that I'm going to do, I'm gonna add also the a backplate where I want to add this image. So I'm gonna load a map and go inside the backplates folder. And here I'm gonna choose the backplate. I think it's this one. You can also see it by uh, seeing view image. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to add the HDRI into the scene. So I'm gonna split this by two perspective and uh, I'm gonna go to my scene. I'm gonna show save frame. Here I will do exactly the same, show save frame. And now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add my HDRIs into the scene environment. I'm gonna open my materials. So the first thing that I'm going to add is the a single map. I'm gonna add my HDRI first instance. And uh, if I want to see the HDRI also in the background, I need to add the HDRI also on the environment map. So I'm gonna do that because in the beginning it's important to see it, but we can't see it for now. It's because of uh, shit. And now we have the HDRI also in the back. Let's check now how it's the banner looking. Okay, this is the car. It's looking uh, quite well, I would say. And the first thing that we're going to do is to add uh, a plane where we can see the, uh, the shadows underneath the car. So I'm gonna go to primitives, standard, plane, and I'm gonna create a plane here. As you can see, those are the shadows. So you need to make it quite big. I can also scale it if I wanna have it bigger. And then I'm going to create a material for this. So I'm gonna use a shadow catcher and to this shadow catcher, I'm just gonna add for now this HDRI as a backplate, green projection, environment projection into the and and I need to also to apply the material. So I'm gonna apply it, and now as you can see, we have a car with shadows. Okay, if I add the car here, you, you can already see that it's looking uh, almost perfect. <laughs> the problem is that I have the shadows, but I also have some shadows from the from the tree and it's not looking perfect. Anyway, for now, uh, what we're going to do, we're gonna change the way the, uh, the projection of the HDRI is on the scene. So to do that, I'm just gonna go back to the material and what I'm going to do, I'm gonna select on my, on my HDRI here and I'm gonna make some small changes. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna use a dome for the HDRI, not a 3D spherical. And here I'm gonna give to the HDRI 21 meters and the height of the camera 1.7 maybe. Yeah, I think this could work. And now if I, when I move here inside the, now my, my HDRI is fixed on the, on the scene. As you probably can see what I see here, it's not that realistic anymore because my HDRI is a no, actually, it's quite close to reality, I think. Uh, the only problem is that I need to rotate my car. Oh, also, with the wheels. So I need to select everything. I'm going to make a selection like this and group. And now I'm going to select all of them and rotate everything. And try to add my car on the road. Okay, this is looking uh, quite nice. I like it. Give me a little bit more here and I can rotate up everything a little bit. Yeah, this is looking nice. But right now my render is on a HDRI. So it's not, as you can see here, it's stretching a little bit, but uh, it's uh, nice that I can rotate and my HDRI stays where it is. The only problem is that I have some stretching in some sides, but as I said, we're not going to use this uh, 
uh, HDRI for the final render. But what we're going to do, we're gonna use this for the uh, backplate. So now we're gonna do that. We have the backplate in the material slot, which is this one. So we're going to add this backplate. I'm gonna go to the render setup. I'm gonna go uh, here and into direct visibility override. I'm gonna add my backplate. I'm gonna click on my backplate to to make it from spherical to green. Okay, this looks good. And then on the plane that we have on the scene where the car sits, we're gonna change the Corona HDRI 360 image to the backplate. Okay, this looks amazing already. And uh, now we have the backplate uh, behind our car and also the shadows on the floor. So what we're going to do now, I'm gonna stay here and click on this magic button, which is creating a camera from the view. And now I have a camera in here in this view. And now if I go to the, this image, which is the backplate behind, I can click on it here and I can see the name of the image, which is called backplate 20 75 millimeters. So the 75 meter millimeters is actually the lens of the camera. So what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna click here on my camera, select camera, I'm gonna go here and uh, create a 75 millimeters. So I'm gonna go to focal in millimeters and here I'm gonna put 75. And now I have the same focal length as And now I'm gonna try to add my car and try to move it here and here. And try to position my car on the road better. So I'm just gonna move left and right to see how I can uh, position this better on my car. As you can see here, I also need to do some other adjustments. Uh, one is the opacity, the refraction for the windows. So I'm gonna click F10 and go here and see that I have reflection override that is black right now. So for this, I'm just gonna use the map the HDRI that we have and for the refraction I'm gonna use the backplate and in this moment now I can see the forest behind the, the windows what I'm going to do next is to add the motion blur for the wheels which are already animated so to do that you need to go to the camera and to Uh, the motion blur on and also check if you have it on yeah here it's already on so the motion blur for the camera and the geometry needs to be on to have this effect for for the wheels if you want to have it more you can just uh, select the camera uh, if you want to see more the motion blur you can just go to uh, yeah because the wheels are already animated the motion blur is already there uh, if you want to see it more you need to open you need to change the animation for each wheel and go here with the rotate and just rotate more the wheel so i'm just gonna go to approximate 1000 for these wheels So yeah, the, depending on the on the shutter speed of the camera. So right now the shutter speed of the camera, if I go here, the shutter speed is 50. If I change this uh, to a longer, to a smaller number, it's gonna change also the 
and now uh, I'm just gonna go to perspective and I'm gonna make a quick render. I'm gonna do 2000, put the frame buffer here and do a quick render. As you can see the wheels are spinning already and now uh, we're just gonna play a little bit with the uh, Sharpening and denoising. Uh, yeah, the denoising is not working because I need to add it. So I'm just going to the scene. I'm just gonna put a noise level of two, and then denoising. I'm just gonna you go use for the Corona high quality and um, heat render all over again. Okay, so this was the final render. The uh, image, as you can see, is uh, denoised and uh, done. I think the spinning, uh, it's a little bit exaggerated, but it looks very realistic to me. And um, yeah, what can I say? Uh, I hope you enjoyed these lessons as much as me. And if you have any comments, please don't uh, forget to leave them below. And uh, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe if you didn't subscribe yet. Hit the like button. It really helps my uh, channel. And see you in the next one. Bye.